Who has? Who does? Well, that's in your little world. And his little world is called the kid bun. Actually, yours will be the boy bun. <laughs> when you become 21, it will be. <laughs> so you want to sing? There you go. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, anyway, thank y'all for being with us, and uh, didn't mean to start such a conversation with that. But we uh, got Christmas about what a week away. Everybody's bought all the gifts. Called a Frady expression. Frady expression. <laughs> that was definitely a vapor above a Frady move right there now, if I ever saw one. <laughs> anyway, thank you all for being with us this morning. Go ahead, Charlie Ray. We uh, hope you have a great day today, and today we're going to be talking about uh, the home in Nazareth. In our message today. It's, it's really good. It's not a long one, but it's, uh, it's very beneficial for the stories we've been following from uh, the genealogy of Jesus Christ all the way up to this point. I was trying to get us to this point so we could have a good time with it. Uh, anyway, if you uh, got somebody that's uh, sick, be sure you write down their name so we can pray for them today. And uh, anybody that's uh, suffering and lost, I want to pray for them too. Anybody struggling, we know where Charm's at. We know where that other young lady is. And we're praying for them. And we're glad they're able to go get a pass and all that kind of stuff and have a good time. So you wouldn't bow your heads, but go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you today for your presence. Lord, we ask you to be with us through our service today as you have in Sunday school today. Lord, we, Lord, we just thank you for giving us the opportunity to learn more about your word in this time of the holidays, Lord, that we need more of your word. Lord, we need to learn so much more about your birth and, and how this came about. And Lord, the only way to do that is focus on you. Lord, we thank you for our, our time that we were able to be together last night, our fellowship, and, and all that we just kind of come together, Lord, and, and just love each other. It's just so, so awesome that we're allowed to do that in such a good Christian manner. So, Father, be with us today as we bring glory to you and all the praise and glory to you. Amen and amen. Amen. We're going to do a song called Holy Spirit right here. And Frankie, you can start any time you want to. Y'all can stand up, if you don't mind, since Sean had you sitting down for an hour or so. We're going to get you on your feet. What I want y'all to do during this song is I want you to kind of get to the chorus part and just close your eyes and lift your hands to the Lord. Because this is what this is all about, is Jesus Christ. Because without what he did, we wouldn't be here. Without God giving his son to us. And there's nothing worth more that could ever come close nothing can compare your living hope your presence lord your presence lord do it again i've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence lord your presence lord holy spirit you're welcome here holy spirit you are welcome here 
Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. We'll take it back to the top again right here. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing to compare your living hope. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord, let us become, let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. That again. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place with the atmosphere. Your presence, Lord, is all we need today. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, it's what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Raise your hands and feel the Lord's presence this morning in your heart, right in your heart. Our God is always with us each and every single day. And I thought that would be the best way to start this morning was with the Holy Spirit. We're going to go to friend of God right here.
Y'all put your hands together when I hit this drum. Come on. That's it. Come on. You know what I've been talking about lately is being a lame Christian. To me, when God created you and I and the heaven and the earth and everything, he got excited because he knew what he created was a perfect, a perfect creation. And that's you and, and me and our children, our families, our life, our world. Just pray that we make the right choices in our life to know that we need to do the right things and follow him and thank our great creator for all that he's done for us and all that he'll ever do for us and know that the birth of Jesus Christ was a gift given from God and that all we have to do is understand that and know that he is the great I am. Who am I that you are mindful of me that you knew me when I call Is it true that you are thinking of me How you love me It's amazing It's amazing Come on Sing it, T. 
I am a friend of God. He's we'll get Daryl up here next time. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of Praise team, a big hand. They did a good job this morning. Y'all be seated. We're going to bring the lights back up so we can see your pretty, beautiful, awesome faces that God created. And then there's Thomas. <laughs> I like to mess with him a little bit because I'm allowed to. Came up by here yesterday, me and Lyle kind of set up for last night. And, uh, <laughs> Thomas was sitting here, and then we got in the door, and we all came in, and Thomas started vacuuming. I knew he done worked all night. It was about 1 o'clock, I guess. And he'd been out doing the uh, Christian thing and been visiting some folks and just having a good time. And uh, me and Lyle said, Thomas, go home. We got this. He said, do you ever feel like you've just been evicted? We just love you. We knew you needed rest. We knew you needed to go get some rest. And we knew you were, I, I knew you were going to go until you couldn't stand up anymore. So I've been there before like that, and it's not good for our health. But I didn't listen either. So yeah, we sent him home, and Lyle gave him a donut and a Coke and said, see you later. <laughs> Feed a man, he's about to fall asleep, and he's going to put something in his belly and send him home. Be sure you drive good when you go home, too. Don't run over nobody. <laughs> that was good, man. <laughs> But thank you for doing what you did. You got half of the room vacuum before we said, get out of here. Uh, I'm going to say, too, that last night we had a great time with our Christmas dinner. Also, and so, some of you folks had to leave last night after dinner, but we had one great time last night with the games. Pinning the, the nose on Rudolph's nose from your nose. Now, had I have done it, I would have got there a lot quicker than everybody else because mine's a little bigger. I could have pinpointed it quick, but though they had the best time doing that. And they're pretty good shots, too. I think one of them put it on the tail. I'm not sure. The nose, That's we blindfolded them. That's what it was. So it, it's had a great time. It was just a lot of fun and, and kids and laughing and, and some other stuff. The candy cane thing, that was pretty cool where you put it in your mouth and you got to cook and all these candy canes laying on the table and can't use your hands. And what well, was she did the Rudolph thing and then you did the candy cane thing and what was the other one? Jingle bells in the box. Man, if I was a gambler, I could have played some bets last night on that bad boy. Of course, Shirley won most of the numbers. She got most of them right. I think she had an inside track to the answers anyway. We all thought that, didn't we? Yeah. Do you want to say that again? Uh, what would you say? <laughs> it's a, well, we had a really good time. It, just, it was an awesome night, a lot of fun, great fellowship, and um, we just appreciate those of you who were able to make it and those uh, that didn't, well, we missed you. We're going to do it again every year. Um, come here. Um, we'll get there. Just let me do the program and I'll get it. Now, this sweater this young man has on and the one Frankie has on, where'd TJ go? Oh, stand up. Come here. Come on, TJ, come up here. I want, you, I want them to see what all you did. You want us to cut out the lights? We cut out the lights. Can you turn those on? Hang on. Let me, TJ, surely get that light right there. Well, I don't care. Now cut the lights on. Is that cool or what? Now, yeah, as you're observing the blinking lights, that's the kind of the, the light, the, the signal tower to bring Santa in, right? So next year, the Sunday before 
Christmas Eve. I want everybody to wear the ugliest sweater they can find. Okay? Now, next Sunday, we're going to let you practice. Everybody wear ugly sweater next Sunday. Right here. Okay? And the winner will receive a gift. And I won't tell you what that is, but it will probably be blinking just like that. Okay? No, you can't. So be sure you wear the ugly sweater next Sunday to practice for next year. Because then you're going to get a good idea of what you need to do in a more realistic way. Okay. So y'all know about, like, hear no evil, see no evil, and speak no evil? All right. So I'm hear no evil because I'm... He see no evil, and he speak no evil because we don't speak about that. So just want to let y'all know about that one. That's what we came up with. That's really a good one to speak about because it has an angel on the front. I took up for you that time. But he, he wears this one here because he works for Wife Saver, and it says, eat more chicken. I know what it is. I know where what it came from. I know where you work, and that's why I didn't say Chick-fil-A. It's just messing with you, so I think that's great. And you should keep that so your parents can keep up with you a little better. And you're right. Listening, you're, you hit that rail right on the head, man. That was good. Okay, thank you, guys. Go be seated there. That's what we're going to do next year. And next Sunday, wear your ugly sweater. You're welcome, Kevin. That's 10 bucks. Good morning, everyone. Um, come out and be with us on Tuesday nights for the men's and ladies meeting starting at 630. And also on Thursday nights, they have the Breaking Point Ministries. They eat at 630. The meeting starts at 7. I haven't been able to come for the past two Thursdays because of work. And I really miss it. And I want to come back. So if y'all could come out and be with them for that. And December the 30th is our dedicated fifth Sunday to go down to Solomon's Porch. We will meet here at 5 o'clock for a quick word from Pastor Bill, some praise and worship here, and then head over there for their praise and worship. And January 19th is our um, third Saturday for the bridge ministry because we are not doing second Saturdays anymore. We are moved to the third Saturdays. So come out and be with us for that one. And um, a big thank you to everyone that helped for the Christmas dinner last night. And it was, I guess it was a success, but that success. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. All right. Um, thank y'all and come out for these events. Thanks, Kevin. Sir. He's right here. Listen. <laughs> oh, he did. He can. I'll, I'll let him go ahead and, uh, but anyway. Ugly sweaters, be sure you get those. Um, so the t he said the, the 30th of Solomon's Porch, right? Okay, I'll be sure I got it right. Because we haven't been there in, gosh, I don't know, a few months. But the pastor's already been asking when we were going to be back there, so that's, that's, a, that's a good thing. Thanks, Kevin, you did a good job, man. Um, by the way, ladies and men's meeting this week, we'll be having some great food from last night. Because we hung on to the ham and the mac and cheese and the dressing and stuff. And there'll probably be other things. I don't know. There was a lot of food there last night. Kevin and I were comparing when we left. <sighs> Neither one of us breathed, could we? That's all right. We, can, we're, we are allowed to be like that. This time we're going to take up any prayer requests with that we can to get those. I'm going to lift up some folks. Be sure that you write their name down so we can get them. But uh, before that, where's, uh, come here, Jaden. Come right here beside me. Thank you. So I got word here that this is Jaden Napoleon, by the way. That beginning college classes in mechanical engineering in high school. So when he graduates high school, he will also have a college degree. Now, I think that is amazing. 
It's all God. That's awesome. Great parent, great family. I think the whole church deserves to give him a big hand. He deserves it. Glad of you, man. That is, that is incredible. We are, so, look at there. High five. There we go. Wow, you did it. Way to go. You did it. Is that all you got? Congratulations. <laughs> anyway, I want you to know we are so proud of you, man. I heard about that. I made me feel like I probably needed to go back to elementary school. You're a smart guy. But you have great, great parents. And this church loves you a lot. <laughs> this guy could be a son of mine. I'd take him and raise him the rest of the way if you need me to. I don't have a I don't have to go through all the rough stuff. You already did all that. <laughs> the shoes. Wow. <laughs> well, I'll tell you a little story about that, if you don't mind. Not comparing. My son was a 13 and a half. And just to let you know, I fully understand the cost of those size of shoes. But he has eight kids now. So he's going to fully understand what a multiple pair of shoes cost. <laughs> and I hope all of them are 14s. <laughs> so just to let you know that I feel your pain. When he used to, we used to cook him breakfast, you know, you cook most kids one or two, not him. It was one dozen at a time. And it wasn't a bowl of cereal. It was a box of cereal at a time. And it wasn't a two pieces of pizza. Ask Drea. That's why she's so thin. Because he would eat a whole pizza by himself. Everything we cooked for that kid was... A full meal for himself. Everybody else just had to have what was left. There wasn't anything. So I feel your pain. But, hey, he's going to come back out and preach for us pretty soon, and he's still a big guy. Um, I was trying to get him up here next Sunday morning, but it didn't work out because in this uh, last child that they have birthed, that Christ allowed them to have, uh, that uh, we almost lost his wife and his baby. And they're healing the baby's fine. The mama's going to take her about up to a year to heal from what she went through. They just almost lost her on the table. Uh, so, you know, God saved her life. Great family. All homeschooled. If I was homeschooling my kids, I would not have another one. <laughs> Especially if they were like you. Yeah, amen. <laughs> You come from Walmart? Is that what you're saying? Brother Will's got a prayer request for Miss Ernestina's mom with Alzheimer's. want to lift her up and strengthen her memory. And, and Lord, I, I just pray right now even that you will give her what she needs to stay strong. Also, the Cruz family and Will, some unmentioned, Ashley and Seth, Tony and, and Meg was for their salvation.
please. Sweet little Jesus boy, you had to be born in a manger. Didn't know you'd come to save us, Lord. Wash our sins away. Our eyes were blind and we could not see. We didn't know. Everybody here as we go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Thomas, if you would, pray over our tithes and offerings. Thank you, guys. I'm going to read something to you folks that I've been wanting to do. You know, we put the Christmas tree up because I just felt more like the cross was the most important thing at Christmas to me, Jesus Christ, being born. So, you know, we've been taught all our life about Santa Claus. So this morning, I'm going to tell you who Santa Claus is. I did a little bit of research, and what I found was what I'm going to give you right now. So you will have a better understanding of how all this came together. I don't know how many of you ever knew how or why. I questioned it all my life, and in a traditional way, you can cut me back if you want to. They call him Saint Nicholas, Santa Claus, and Father Christmas. So listen to this very closely so you'll understand. The man behind the story of Father Christmas Santa Claus. Saint Nicholas was a bishop who lived in the fourth century in a place called Myra, in Asia Minor, which is now called Turkey. He was a very rich man because his parents died when, when he was young, and they left him a lot of money. He was also a very kind man and had a reputation for helping poor and giving secret gifts to people who needed it. There are several legends about St. Nicholas, although we don't know what's true and what's not true, okay? The most famous story about St. Nicholas tells us how the custom of hanging up stockings and putting presents, how it first started. It goes like this. There was a poor man who had three daughters. The man was poor, so poor that he did not, did not have enough money to pay for a dowry, and the dowry is a sum of money paid to the bride, bridegroom by the bride's parents or wedding, I mean, on the wedding day. He didn't have enough money to do that, so his daughters couldn't get married. So this still happened in some countries, even today. But one night, Nicholas, thank Nicholas, secretly dropped a bag of gold down the chimney into a house. Okay? This meant that the oldest daughter was then able to be married. Well, the bag fell into a stocking that had been hung by the fire to dry. This was repeated later with the second daughter. Finally, he determined to discover the person who had given the money. 
the father of the daughter, secretly hid by the fire every evening until he caught Nicholas dropping in a bag of gold. Nicholas begged the man not to tell anyone what he had done because he did not want to bring attention to himself. But soon the news got out, and when everyone received the gift, it was thought that it maybe was from Nicholas. Well, how St. Nicholas became Santa Claus is right here. In the 16th century, in the northern Europe, after the Reformation, the stories and traditions about St. Nicholas became unpopular. But someone had to deliver presents to children at Christmas. So in the UK, particularly in England, he became the Father Christmas, or Old Man Christmas, an old character from stories and plays during the Middle Ages of the UK and parts of the Northern Europe, and in France where he was known as Pierre Noel. In some countries, including parts of Austria and Germany, the present giver became the Christ-like, a golden-haired baby with wings who symbolizes the newborn baby Jesus. Okay, so he was honoring Jesus Christ. In the early times, his name was Chris K Kringle, they called him. Okay? Later, Dutch settlers in the they, they took the old stories of St. Saint, Saint Nicholas with them and Chris K Kringle and St. Nicholas became Santa Claus, as we now call him Santa Claus. Many countries, especially ones in Europe, celebrate St. Nicholas Day on the 6th of December in Holland and some other European countries. Children leave clogs and shoes on the 5th of December, St. Nicholas Eve, to be filled with presents. They also believe that if they leave some hay and carrots in their shoes, then Santa Claus's horse, they will be left complete. Well, it says in 1803, the famous poem, A Visit from St. Nicholas, or Twas the Night Before Christmas. So if you had any doubt about Santa Claus, there was a St. Nicholas for many, many years ago. And it has carried on carried on. And there are still gifts being brought to the home. I just remember that Jesus Christ is the reason for Christmas. Because of his birth. But there was a Saint Nicholas and it was real. Back in the very old days. And also remember that Saint Nicholas gave to the poor because his family was very rich. And he could have taken that money and done all for himself and not for you. Or for anybody else. So therefore, understand that what he did was to help people. So when you give at Christmas, you're giving from your heart. You're not giving from your wallet or because you have to in tradition. That's how this started, according to what I found. That was the, the best uh, description I could find of it, and I looked at probably a dozen of them. So I hope that helps you understand a little better about Christmas and St. Nicholas and that he was a bishop. He was religious. Wanted to give to the poor. So I'm going to do a song here for you. Chestnuts roasting on a rope of fire. Jack Frost nipping at your nose Yuletide carols being sung by a choir And folks dressed up like Eskimos Everybody knows a turkey and some mistletoe Tiny tots with their eyes all aglow will find it hard to sleep tonight. They know that Santa's on his way. He's loaded lots of toys and goodies on his sleigh.
Every mother's child is gonna spy to see if reindeer really know how to fly. And so I'm offering this simple phrase to kids from one to ninety-two. Although it's been said many times, many ways, Merry Christmas to you. It's your own Christmas morning. You get up and you read about the birth of Christ to your children. Let them know what it's truly about and where miracles like Riley are sitting there and other children that have gone through so much. God has allowed them to be here today. That he gave man the ability to write songs like this. It's just awesome. They have a great God. And so I'm offering this simple face. I think a joke here. The kids from 1 to 92. <laughs> Although it's been said. Many times, many ways, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to everybody. All right. Thank you, guys, for doing that. Time we're going to dismiss folks. Uh, do I, do I miss anything? Everything right. I knew I was missing something. I know. You have to call me to announce Jesus' birth. And that's peace on earth, goodwill towards men. And that scripture comes from John 3, 16. Everybody in this room can probably quote these words. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him
that we understand that God's word is true and it's real and he loves us and all that he does is for us. So when he created everybody and everything, that he did it in a way that we would understand later if we decided to follow him. So when he was talking to Joseph, Joseph would listen. He was waiting on God for his deliverance. See, Joseph was miraculously instructed. So are you every single day. You are miraculously instructed by God what you need to do. And if you don't do it and you don't pay attention, guess what? <laughs> you lose. See, the family, Joseph and Mary and Jesus, had been in Egypt for about, say, six years. And they had probably asked God if they could return home. Just as anybody would. Lord, can I go home now? God, can I please go home now? I'm tired of being over here. I want to go home. How do you feel when you go off somewhere and you spend the night somewhere else? You're not in the same bed. You're in a strange room. You got to eat out. You want to go home. When you, when you go on vacation, unless you're just miserable at home, you can't wait to get home so you can rest. I know when Sean and I go on vacation, mostly me, I get ready to go home quick because I'm, I want to be there. And I want to be with my family, too. But I know where I'm most comfortable at is at home. But we need to understand that Joseph and Mary wanted to go home. They were going to go when God told them to go because what was Joseph doing? He was being obedient to God, wasn't he? How many of us are obedient to God to a point where we listen to what God's saying? If I gave Maddie something to do, hypothetically, if I gave her something to do, and gave her instructions to just sit tight, sit tight, be patient. It's going to come, and I want you to go get it. Or I want you to do this, or I want you to do that. Well, I'm just using for example, Maddie. And, and Maddie says, well, okay. Then all of a sudden, a little bit later, I, just, I don't know however long, Maddie says, well, um, is it ready yet? Well, we're not being patient. Okay? So then what happens? Well, if we become a little more patient, see, if I get in a hurry as a human and I want to get somewhere quick and God's saying, no, you stay put, and he's not telling me that in my ear, but he's showing me, stay put, sit tight, because you may walk out in the street and get hit by a car, or you may get in your car and go down the street and run over somebody else. There's a reason for everything. When God tells you to do something, you do it. You follow it. You do exactly what he says. Now, he's not going to come tell you right in your ear all the time. Now, I don't know how many of you I have. I've had him tell me stuff in my ear because of his spirit, because I try to be close to God. And he'll say stuff, and I'll go, I got it. My bad. I got it. I should have heard you the first time. He said, well, I was showing you the first time. Now I'm telling you. How many times I got to tell you before you get it? So he has a reason. Slow down. Why are we in such a hurry in life? When it comes time for Joseph and Mary and Jesus to go home, God showed them it's time to go home. Well, King Herod died, and his son, Archelaus, took over reigning death, okay? But he was not a good guy either. So was Jesus still in danger? Joseph and Mary? So what did he do? Joseph waited for God. Just wanted to go home. But they never attempted to return home until God told them to. See, patiently waiting for God's direction because they, they stay, to do that, you've got to stay still. You've got to obey God. You've got to be dedicated and obligated to God. You know, I was talking to my daughter, and, and you know, I said, hey, you know, thank you for this. And I was talking about church, actually, and a couple other things helping out. And she said, so I think to Sean, she said, hey, I'm all in. I'm in. I'll tell you I'm in. I'm all in. How many people do you know that really want to get what God wants them to have are going to say, I'm in, I'm all in? How many people say that to God from this and this right here? How many of you tell God, I'm all in? Are you really all in or are you partially in? 
Because, see, you can fool people because people are fools. God's not a fool. He did not create us to be fool, fools, but he allows us to be fools so he can discipline us and correct us in life to show us the way to go. So become patient, be still, obey him, be obedient, be committed. I'm all in, God. Well, good. You know where I'm from, Kevin? Missouri. And what do they call that state? Show me state. I'm from Missouri. Show me. You in, show me you're all in. Don't tell me nothing. Just do it. Just do it. God's going to show you the way. If you don't want to follow the way, how can you... How are you going to stay on your feet? Well, see, here we go with Joseph and Mary and Jesus. God's going to tell them where, when they need to go, where they need to go. Because he already knows the plan. He's already laid the plan out. Are we following God's plan? Slow down and follow God's plan. Now, I'm one to run my mouth about slowing down. My wife will text me sometime when I'm gone for hours. She'll say, are you okay? Yes, ma'am, I am. I'm almost home. So she knows it's a little unusual for me to go on a certain amount of time. But for long periods of time, she's used to that with me because I get tied up talking to somebody about the Lord or I'll be at work, can't leave there, whatever. But she'll check on me. Do you think God don't check on you every day? He checks on you every second of your life. So you are in check all the time. Do we need to turn the air on? Turn the air on for her because it's hot up here. I'm hot up here. So anyway, he's going to check on you. So he's got you in check. Be sure you, that you recognize that. A bit of Psalm 27 14 for me 27 14 this the, the, the scripture right here talks about waiting look right here wait on the lord psalm 27 verse 14 wait on the lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart wait i say on the lord wait on the lord be of good courage that's all right you that's fine okay wait on be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart so you got to have courage to be able to wait and have patience. It's not just a trait you pick up. You have got to have courage to do that. So you got to have courage to get behind a wheel of a car to drive it, right? you got to have courage to go to your job and do the best job you can because you've got to encounter foolish people all day long. So you better have courage to be able to handle things. And having courage is having confidence and having being obedient to God. Be still. Be quiet. Listen, be obedient, follow him, have courage. These things are important. It says it right there in Scripture. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. So that's what Joseph and Mary and Jesus were doing. Okay? King Herod died, right? All people, all men die. It's all good. It's all good. All men die. All people die. Okay? Herod died despite, listen, this is very important right here. Herod died no matter whether he had fame, which he had. He had wealth, which he had. He had power, which he had. That's a lot of stuff to have, isn't it? Power, fame, wealth. That's everything that you need, everything. Okay? But think of this difference Stated in, stated in the scripture. Go to Romans 6, 23 for me. Now he had all these things, fame, wealth, and power. Romans 6, 23, listen, this is a very familiar piece of scripture. Right? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So what are they saying here? That Herod had all these gifts and all these things that he had. He was rich. He had all that he ever wanted or needed materialistically physically on this earth but did he have eternal life did he have god wise men i understand you know where jesus was born you saw the bright star or the bright light as they called it the supernatural phenomenon it was a star according to what we know i commission you to go see where jesus the baby jesus that young child is at right now where that baby was born i want to know now and you Get word to me or come back and let me know where he's at. Of course, when the wise men got there, they did not get back to King Herod. They didn't. They went another way back to their own country. Because he said he wanted to come worship him, but what he wanted to do was come kill him. God had all this 
taken care of. Everything was under control. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So here again with Joseph. Joseph was miraculously warned about Herod's son, Archelaus, that he was a threat. Okay? So was Jesus out of danger? No, I don't think so. Okay? In God's eyes, he was. In man's eyes, he was. Note that God led, led Joseph. They call it systematically, if you would, or should I say it's a, it's a fixed plan. That's what that is, a fixed plan. That God did not tell Joseph where to go at first. He simply said, go to the land of Israel. And it was after, when Joseph listened, it was after he went to the land of Israel that God, God told him to go to Nazareth. So he went to Nazareth, okay? Now, was Joseph listening to his parents? Was he listening to Father God? Let's look at Father God as his dad. Okay, his father. He listened to him. I told you to go to Israel. I told you to go to Egypt, and I told you to go to Israel, and then I told you to go to Nazareth. So what they're saying here is that parents influence their children enormously. Look at the influence upon Herod's son from his dad or his father. Look at the influence that he had on him, okay? So, here you got Joseph, you got Mary, you got Jesus. Then you got Archelaus, the son of Herod, who reigned over Judea after Herod died. So you got this guy over here, Herod, who was alive, and it was basically a threat to Jesus Christ, and to a lot of people. And then he died, then his son took over, and he started reigning over that area. Again, God's fixed plan was in place. So, that influence, how we influence our children will determine what they're going to do in their life. Let's take Jaden, for example. You guys have molded that child. God gave him the gift of intelligence. But you showed him, listen, this is real good. You showed your son how to use what God gave him. That's important. That's the root of why he's where he's at right now. Because you showed your son how to use what God gave him. Now, how many kids really listen to their parents when they show them something? Uh, not a whole lot. Thank you, Jaden, for listening to the degree that you did. Now, a lot of kids listen to their parents. They have something that us husbands have with our wives. It's called selective hearing. Mike said, here we go. We have selective hearing. I saw him coming in. I was waiting for that amen. But that, these children can have selective hearing with their parents. They don't have to, but they choose to because society and the world makes them do that. There's too many options out there. Let me get on the Internet. What did that guy do that night when he come up here? That big brother come up here, and he threw his phone over here, held his Bible up. He said, that's what the problem is in these churches because the people come sit on these phones all day long, sitting in a service instead of being in God's Word. Then he go home and get on and start to hear, be quiet, kids, sit around and play this game on this electronic device with all this new technology. I don't have to hire a babysitter because I can sit you in a corner and you'll be quiet. How about getting the Bible out and letting them read some of what Scripture says, and you sit down and read it with them, and then they will understand who God is instead of who technology is or what's going on in this little world because all the world you need to worry about is God's world. He's got everything already worked out completely. People go and do what they want to do when they want to do it instead of doing it when he wants them to do it or allows them to do it. And because you have paid attention to your parents and you guys listened to God and taught your children how to listen to God and follow what he's showing you because you are going to become successful if you continue to do what you're doing. And every one of these young people are very smart. Every one of them. I don't care what age they are. They are all very intelligent. Everybody. And they all have a different gift. And we all have a different purpose in this world to minister to people if you follow God. I can take five people in this room right now and go find some people that are lost. And I promise you one of us is going to reach one of them. But it takes the resources that God has allowed us to have to be able to go and build his kingdom to what he wants it to be. People have the choice 
to go be with him forever in eternity. But if they don't make that right decision, then I'm kind of taking blame because I'm not doing my part in this pulpit and you're not doing your part out there like you're supposed to do. We're all children of God. We all have the same opportunity to make the choice whether to say, I accept you, Lord, and I believe you died for me, for my sin. So I can keep on sinning, Cana, because you died for him already. So I can keep going. That's how foolish we are. We don't think about the fact that he died for us because he loves us so much. Giving us an opportunity to see that with his love, we can do anything that we need to do with simply his love. You don't need an instruction book. He gave you the guide to the path right here. What else do we need to see to know where it's at? Joseph, get up and take Mary and Jesus, my son, take them to Israel. And then when they got to Israel, he said, now, take them to Nazareth. And you will become a Nazarene. That's where that comes from. Herod, his son, Archelaus, same kind of guys, man. We know that God leads the believer on a fixed plan. And there are three reasons for this. Listen, right here. One is to keep the believer what? Close to who? God. Number two is because it strengthens the believer's faith. Reason number three is it keeps the believer, listen right here, from becoming discouraged by seeing his trials lying out in the future. If you believe in God and you understand His power and you understand what He can do in your life, what you think that you see laid out in front of you, He has already taken care of and you're worried about the junk that you think you've got to go through when He's already gone through it for you. Waste your time doing that. Go ahead. But I'm going to spend my time in the Word and let Him take care of the problem. And I'm just going to follow the, the, the track He's laid out for me to walk on. And I ain't got to waste my time. Why would I waste my time trying to fix a bunch of junk that's already been repaired and I could spend that time reaching folks that I know that are lost and help them get to where I'm at so they could do the same thing I'm doing and go help somebody else? Cut and dry. That's just the way that it is. People don't want to listen because they think that everything that they do and everything that they know, they think that they are right a lot more than this book right here is. But guess what? They're not. We're not. I'm not. When they call me from work, what do they do? They ask us questions, don't they, Daryl? Why do they ask us questions? Because they don't know the answer. Or they're too lazy to make the decision. But when we are able to get a call and we make a decision... Because you have God in your life and because you are following God, you're going to generally make the best decision. I was sitting just last night thinking about some stuff, and this morning I came in and had some other things come across my mind, and I just said, you know what, God? I don't have time to deal with this right now. Would you please handle it? And before I came up here this morning, he'd already taken care of it. He'd already done it before I even asked. I just happened to take a good look and see. Open your eyes, boy. Well, I did. Well, I opened them up so big I could see more than I was looking for. But I saw what he wanted me to see, Daryl. I saw the path that he had already fixed and laid out for me to follow. Don't get in a hurry in life. Slow down, be still, obey, be obedient to God, and just simply follow him. Don't get ahead of the game here. And the game is life. It's a world. God is no game. You fall into the game of manipulation. You manipulate your parents when you're inside the womb. You manipulate your parents right off the bat. I'm hungry. Feed me. I got to go to the bathroom. I'm carrying a baby. <laughs> that baby's manipulating. You better get up and go. That baby's going to make you hurt bad. You see what I'm saying? We come out as manipulators. Then we try to manipulate ourselves and our families and the world we live in. And then, and then once we get so good at it, we become master manipulators. You know who the best people are to manipulate? A manipulator. You can fool a fool quicker than you can fool somebody else. That was good. Put that in your book. You can fool a fool quicker than you can anybody else. 
When to manipulate somebody, you find a master manipulator. I promise you, you'll have them right here about that quick boom. You can make them believe whatever you want to make them believe. People that have done that all their life just to get themselves to where they want to be. God is in control. God can handle anything, anytime, anywhere. We cannot. We struggle every single day of our life trying to figure out how we're going to get from point A to point B. You know what's really strange to me? Is point A to point B sometimes is so far apart we can't even find it. We get lost in between the two. You know what's really amazing to me? Here's point A and here's point B. You ain't got to go far. He's already traveled for you. He's done done all that. Follow him. The plan's already laid out. The path is laid out. He's already fixed the problems you have in your life. If you want to be what you've always been, you'll always do what you've always done until you decide to change your life and believe that somebody believes and loves in you, and so does God. That's why you can look at a person that struggles and say, I love you and God loves you. I believe you and God believes in you. And if you don't get it after that, you don't want to get it because you're not through being ignorant. So be a fool. You know why this church isn't filled up? Because I tell it blunt like, that, like it is. I already know that. We see, we, we see people sometimes months, months after things go on in our life. We see them months, maybe a year or so later, and they come up to you later and they go, I love you. Good to see you. And they haven't said, I love you in a year. But they can say it now. Why? Because they've had time to think about the junk and all the stuff they were thinking negative. You take the negative and make it a positive. It's like that baby right there walking in the door, bro. Okay? That's the most positive example of a human being I've ever seen in my life. That child shouldn't even be here today. She shouldn't have been here yesterday or a year ago or two years. How old is she anyway? Am I past her age already? What? Okay, two years ago she shouldn't have been here. Three years ago she shouldn't have been here. But she is. I mean, walking around, not supposed to be able to walk or do any of the things that she's doing. That child has been through so much junk that you better be glad that he gave you what he gave you and not what he gave her. Because you couldn't handle it like she has. And I promise you, that's one of the best walking testimonies you'll ever see in your life right there. And I promise you, when she grows up, no matter what she's been through or what she's going to go through, she's going to be able to witness to somebody and say, look at me. Look what I've been through, and if I can make it, why can't you? Why are you playing with your life? God's not playing with your life. If he wants you here, you're going to be here. If he wants you to have something, you're going to have it. If you want to be in control, go stand in a closet somewhere so you can control the door that you're going to open and close. You open the door to the kingdom of heaven when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. When Jesus told Joseph and Mary, it's time to go, get up and go. I got you protected. Herod's gone. Archelaus is in control. But I still got you. Go to Israel. And then he sent them to Nazareth. Because he knew the time. God's time was right. Ours is not. Understand we follow God's time frame. It's systematic. It's a fixed plan. Follow him. Not yourself and not somebody else. Follow only God. This is so important. Things happen in our life. Children, listen to your parents. Parents, lead your children properly. Lead them in God's Word and do the right thing. God, give me the opportunity to recognize I need to keep my mouth shut sometime, God. Talking about me, not y'all. To keep my mouth shut sometime so I don't embarrass somebody or be rude to somebody. But then sometimes you get so anxious and excited because you want to tell somebody about Jesus Christ, you can't shut up like me. You can't. You just keep talking. Whether you go to Walmart or you go to Kroger or whether you go to the ball field, you walk up to somebody and say, I know Jesus. You know him? You're crazy. I am, but let me tell you about Jesus. I'm talking about Fogarty. He's crazy. He is crazy for Jesus Christ. And I use it only, I'm just picking it, Mike, because he's a great example. And I've been around Mike a little bit now and, and I remember the first day I ever met him and listened to his story. And he knew I was trying to figure him out then, and I knew he knew. But he would open up when God allowed him to open up to me, and he did a little bit. And I felt better because I knew a little bit more about Mike. And then when I see Mike now and I look at him a year ago, I go, 
I must have had these on the other way when he was talking to me before. But you know the thing about it is, is he started paying attention to God, just like Daryl was paying attention to God. Daryl's been through how many surgeries, and you're still laying, sitting up in here? You're still alive? Really? I thank God for that because I was getting tired at work and glad you came back. But God gave you life. And you tell me if anybody that I know that has ever been negative, but you're never negative, but if anybody I know that's ever told me God's got this, if you said it once, you said a hundred times, but the thing that got me is you were exactly right every time, and you knew that he had it, and you let him do it. There's so many miracles sitting in this room right now. You will be what you were if you want to continue to be where you were. And I say that with all my heart. I wanted at one time riches, and I wanted to be famous, and, and I'm not that great of a musician and a singer, but what I was is I was in the right place at the time that it could have been happening. Met some really big people, but so what? That was just a name. When I met the biggest one in my life was when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and have not looked back since. Now, I might have stumbled and fell and fallen on my face a few times, but I got up, and here I am today. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's the same thing that you can do. Put all this junk behind you because, see, you cannot take that past. You cannot take it and bring it back. Leave it right there. That's what the band says when they can't leave it, end the song together. Leave it right there. He left it there, didn't he? He left it on that cross. He died for you. He, all your burdens should be put at the foot of the cross. Give them all to him. You don't have to carry them anywhere. They get heavier. The more that you carry, the heavier that they get. And the farther you go with all that weight, guess what it's going to do? It's going to drag you down. And where are you going to end up, Kevin? In a hole. In a dark pit. And you won't be able to get out because all your burdens are weighing you down. Until you say, Lord Jesus Christ, I accept you as my Savior. I know you died for me. God, thank you for giving your son for me to have life. Where you want to be? You want to be with him? Or you want to be in that dark pit, that hole you fell in? Don't ignore God. Focus on God. Give him your utmost attention. When you're told to do something, we as children growing up, when our parents stood up back in, our, back in my day, when they told you to do something, you didn't do it, you got up off the floor about 10 or 20 feet away. If you did that today, I'd be sitting in the jail. Because if I did that to my kids, like, my, I, like I was done to a certain degree, but that's the way it was back then. What happened to society? What happened to the kids today? It's not that they have a bad influence in the world. There's a lot of great influence out there. It's just that the justice system has turned so much stuff around. We cannot do anything to discipline our children without us going to jail. And then they got nobody. You see the point? There's so much out there that's restricting our hands. We all have chains on us, Kevin, for a long time from the world. But we do not have to be restricted to what God wants us to do. Because he will release those chains. He will break those chains. And they will never, ever again, ever, ever be a burden. Did you get them off to him? Go to Psalm 48, 14. I'm going to wrap this up right here. Holy Spirit got a hold of me. I'm not going to apologize. I just got to go on. You know what I'm saying? Doc's over there. Sorry. I got my main man's up here today. Psalm 48, 14. For this God is our God forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Okay? He will be our guide even to death. He will be our guide even to death. Will he be our guide after death? He guides us all the way through death. He's not going to let go of us then. He's going to take us all the way. All of the way. Not part of the way. My God is not an on-call God. He's not a part-time God. He's not one that you can go to the ATM and cash in when you feel like it with your number. He's a full-time God that don't cost you nothing except to believe in His Son, Jesus Christ. To accept Him as your Lord and Savior and know that He died for you on that cross. And to realize that He did that and realize that He is the only way that you will ever get to where you need to be. Don't ever doubt him. Don't ever doubt him. And Joseph obeyed. He was a man who walked in obedience. Repeatedly, Scripture was what? Being fulfilled. Because he was obedient all of the time. 
very obedient. But see, be like Joseph. Be obeying. Be obedient. Be, be conscious of what God's showing you and follow him. Jesus lived in Nazareth. Look here. Nazareth was a little bitty small town and community. Little bitty. It is no dishonor to come from a humble home in a small town. No dishonor whatsoever to come from a humble home in a small town. See, everything about Jesus' family and childhood was what? It was humble. Humble yourselves before the Lord. Okay? The believer can rest assured that Jesus is the Messiah. No doubt, no question anywhere. Jesus is the Messiah. Go to John chapter 1, verse 14 for me real quick. John chapter 1, verse 14. And the world became flesh, listen, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, and the glory as of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Now that's some scripture you ought to have written down somewhere. John 1, 14. The world became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. He is the truth, the light, and the way. How much of that do we not understand, right? I'm just going to ask you a couple things, and I'm done. Really. Have you found Christ today? And if you haven't found Christ today, you're not guaranteed eternity. You may die on this earth. If you want to live in eternity with Christ and with God and the kingdom of God, you better accept him today if you have not. If you need to renew your faith, renew your life to Christ, today is the day to do it. Do not wait another second. Do not wait another moment. Do not wait, period. If you're unsure about what this book right here says, you need to let's sit down and let's have a discussion about it. Because, see, we got resources and a lot of them. I promise you, I'll put you in a room about five or six people. And you're going to come out cross-eyed. If you, and if you got hair, you, it's going to be gone, too. Worse than Daryl. It's going to be gone. Because, see, they're going to give you so much information and resources that you need from this word right here. You're going to go, wow, wow. That's going to be the only vocabulary you're going to have till you, till you start breathing. Wow, wow, that's in here, wow. I could have done that, wow. Just wow. What if you put on the back window of your car? Wow, guess who I met? I guarantee you somebody going to ask you who you met. But some fool going to do that. Who'd you meet? Glad you asked Glad you, let me give you my card first so you know what you're talking to. I met Jesus. Do you know Jesus? It's a little pickup line for you, by the way. Wow, guess who I met? Wow, guess who I know? That's another good one. I know Jesus Christ. And without Jesus Christ, I am going to get nowhere. Nowhere. If you don't know him today, you need to accept him in your heart. Renew your faith. Don't go another day without Jesus Christ in your life. Not with no other day. Here you go. Humble yourself today and let the world just go. Humble yourself today and let's let the world go. Humble yourself today. Let the world go. Because, see, the world's got a hold of you right now. If I was to walk over to Sean right now and just do this right here, that's how the world's got a grip on us right now. They got us. And because we allow them to have us, they control us. We're going to drop these lights. We're going to play a little music for you at the end. If you don't know Jesus Christ, please come up and accept him. We're going to renew your faith, your life. Please come up. We'll help you with that too. him well, man. <laughs> wow. If you got anything that you need to pray about today, come up to this altar and pray. If you don't, then pray right where you're at. I'm just giving you the opportunity. 
be obedient to Christ, know that the path he's laid out is a fixed plan. You know, when you go refinance your house, they won't know if you want to get it on a fixed, a fixed thing or, or whatever. In this moment, you fix your rate right in there, when rate, heaven breaks through, God's got a fixed rate for you. Except him. I want to stay you know what it costs you? Nothing. forever with Just you. follow him. And I am surrounded. And I just want to worship. It's all I want to do. Will you fully inhabit the song I sing to you? Oh, and I just want to worship. I lift my hands to you. Fully present in this moment. Fully given you. Drawn to the beauty. perfection when we're face to face and I am surrounded and I just want to worship it's all I want to do will you fully inhabit the song I sing to you oh, and I just want to worship lift my
I just want to worship It's all I want to do Fully inhabit The song I sing to you I just want to worship And lift my hands to you Fully present in this moment Fully given Drawn to the beauty, the glory of your grace. I see perfection when we're face to face. I am surrounded. Cause I just want to worship. It's all. God moves, he moves. When he touches somebody, he touches them. He doesn't play games. Be sure your life is where you need it to be when you walk out of this place. I'm going to bring our kids back in here. Paul, just open both those doors for me, will you? Look at 
valley and I just see peace, man. Y'all stand to your feet. Let's take someone's hand beside you. Come on. Y'all come on. y'all for being here today and allowing us to bring these teachings and messages to you. Be back here today at 5 and be with us. Another message. Christmas Eve coming up after this week. Y'all, hope you got shopping done. If you don't, uh, I'll be like go Monday. Go with bow your head and through the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you today for your presence for the dear Lord. We thank you for all that you give us Lord, that you allow us to give others. You know, Lord, like I said earlier, wow, guess who I know? <laughs> I know you. Father, be with us as we go throughout our life every day in the trials and tribulations that we encounter, Lord, that you will, you will overcome those. With us being together with you, because we know you've already conquered them, but we need you to take us right on through the fire. So we can walk right through it and not even be burned, scorched, or anything. Because we allow you to, to guide us. In every way that you do. So we just must follow you, Lord. I, I pray for these young people that are struggling, that are trying to find their way. Lord, I pray for the parents. And they will lead their, their, their children, their young people, lead them in the right way, not the wrong Feed them not only with the word, but feed them good food, Lord. That these parents will do the right thing. Lord, guide these families, Lord, to be good Christian families to do your work. We will through these holidays, Lord, we will do the right thing. Father, I just thank you for your presence. Today, Lord, just cover us with your unconditional love as you always do. Lord, take us down that path. We need to be He's laid out for us a fixed plan, and we will pay attention to it. We will all we will be with us. Bible study on Tuesdays and breaking point on Thursdays, and progress that all these groups are making with us. Bridge ministries and going to other churches and doing things. Lord, I just thank you for all this. Lord, I give all these things to you today and all my heart. Lord, I know you're going to take them and do with them as you know that needs to be done. Lord, I just thank you for that. Brother Mark, if you would, close us out. Lord, pray.